Okay, that should be. Yep, we're on. Okay, so how to keep presence with creativity. Uh, also, you know, things like um, uh, if one has been diagnosed with things uh, like dyslexia or whatever. Um, but what I would say is, um, you know, the thing of focusing on a book, for example, and, and well, I don't say that. If one has been labelled with anything, I would cancel the labels. Because if I have a label, for example, with a condition, um, then I will, I will manifest that label. You know, it's like I will, I will tune into the label within the uh, collective unconscious and I will display all the symptoms. So if I have a label, like a, a medical label, like I find it difficult to mem memorize things or repeat things or understand things, then I would definitely cancel the label because that can also be a thing for allowing uh, a much higher level of consciousness and functioning and presence. Um, also, I would, I, you know, you, also if, there, if a thing is happening, yeah, I would be doing a lot of stuff to make whatever is the problem around it. Like, folk, you see, here's the thing: creativity and not losing presence. Well, the ultimate answer to that is very, very easy. You know, there ha you know, if there's a, not to lose presence means the presence has to be doing the creativity, not the ego. So then that becomes a thing of, um, so if the ego is trying to read a book and also be present, well, the, the, well let me describe what, what does ego mean. It means there is a lot of identification with thoughts and body. And so the center of self is experienced as a limited self. So it's like me separating my thinking is trying to read a book and be present. They're not... That, you know, if I'm really engrossed in my thinking and I think my thinking is very me and I'm trying to read a book and have presence, they're not going to go together. So to the extent that the limited me is being experienced reading a book, there will be less presence. To the extent the lim limited me, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll go into uh, the usual tools we talk about in this group, how to dissolve the limited me so that presence, presence is doing activities rather than the limited ego doing them. Uh, activities. So, like, you know, so let, let's say, like, a, a, a great one would be like art or something like that. You know, is someone in their head thinking about, you know, trying to uh, draw a picture, or if some is, is it just presence without the ego and automatically, like an instrument, the painting is happening? The same would happen with reading. You know, presence could, could be reading a book. Uh, if that's what presence want to do, that would be grace, or the non-dual field could be reading a book. Or is the ego, ego is trying very hard to read a book there and finding that there's not much presence when reading. Well, that, that by its nature would happen, because when one is in, enmeshed with the thinking and the limited identity, then there is automatically a loss of presence. That is different to the thing of focus, because focus is actually... Um, Focusing on something and trying to do something is something that happens from the ego. Uh, because um, anything that's happening from grace tends to be more natural and more flowing in its nature. So it seems to be more innate. Uh, I know for myself, I would have programs like, I have to understand this book. I have to retain all the information. If I don't retain all the information, I'm bad and the world's going to end or I'm stupid. So it's like, to the extent, you know, and it's like, if there is these problems, like if there's labels like people have diagnosed me with conditions, I, I, would, I would definitely cancel those until I don't believe I have that, because that will definitely, if I think like, oh, you've got this medical condition, it means you're not good at focusing and you forget things and you can't retain information, then I've probably got that program and I probably will, oh, I can't, can't focus on it. The other thing would be like to try and think what childhood programs have I got around you know, oh, you know, the teacher said when I was six years old, you can't remember things, you're stupid, you know. Oh, why is it that I, every time I read a book, I can't remember anything? So if, I, if I've got a program, I'd cancel that program. Um, I might have a program that everything I do should be difficult and, and, I, and I can't do it well. well. Oh, well, that's not a program. So, but then also I'll be practicing the observer, 
to be present means I want to be, it must be less of a limited experience. It must be less of a, a limited me doing an experience. It must be more of a flow from the universe, you know. And I think, you know, here comes a problem. Because if my ego wants to re retain information 100%, it's important to the ego, and it's got lots of programs, by, by definition, presence will not be there, because there's all these unconscious programs going on in the background. You know, um, like, if you don't remember everything, you're going to be bad. Like, you know, like, uh, in flow, in flow, the limited, limited self doesn't exist. So whatever is retained, uh, I would say it's more like things... One is, there is a, it's not really a verbal thing. There's a trust that every moment is good enough and that the next moment will be good enough. If something needs to be remembered for the next moment, it can, it'll come not from the ego, it'll spontaneously arise because the universe needs that information to, to spontaneously arise. And if it doesn't spontaneously arise, that's okay. Because when you're in the, the fields of presence, the ego-defining meaningful situations dissolves. So whether, whether I retain the information or not is meaningless. Uh, whether people like, what, that, you know, whether people judge me or not for, oh, you've forgotten everything, and that doesn't happen. So everything is effortless. And, but also sometimes when one is in grace, that is that, you know, I would say that is a higher level. But no, it might not be necessarily what the ego wants. Like if you've got a program that I should be able to read a book and focus 100% and remember every single word on it. I mean, that could, you know, one thing is, is that an ego, is that an ego program? Or is that a lack of trust? Is that a fear-based program? So, uh, but anyway, I go back. So that's at the level of full presence. At the level of practicality, what about being practical and improving? Let's say, you know, I, have, I read jobs, I read books for my, for my work, and there's a boss, there at the end of the day, and my paycheck resides on it, uh, and I want to remember more, then I'll just cancel any negative programs I may have around it. Um, uh, uh, I'd probably do prayers like, uh, Dear God, I humbly ask you to be able to, for me to be able to retain more information so I can be more, more of love of service to others, if that, if that be your will. Another thing, you know, with my prayers are always if it be God's will. I mean, you know, God may... You don't know if God what really wants you to, to go off into bliss and sit on a park bench for two years, you know, and your ego's, <coughs> your ego's fighting, like I want to be an astronaut or something, you know, so I need to remember all of this data. So, uh, so that, you know, is there levels of surrender? And if, if there's not levels of surrender, that's okay. You know, you can keep to, um, if you want to retain a better memory, just can, I cancel my belief I haven't got a good memory. I cancel my belief... Um, uh, I cancel any fears, like if I haven't got a good memory, I'll be sacked and then I'll be homeless and then I'll die. So I cancel that, you know, cancel all of those things. I would also practice, you know, creativity or remembering, so just practice, practice in the observer. Like, can I, okay, so let's read this book and the aim is to retain information, but let's practice doing that in the observer. You know, let's practice doing that in the observer. And if not, if like real negativity is coming up, like beliefs, like the observer can't retain information, you need an ego to retain information. So, uh, but practice on that, you know, can stuff be retained? Can there be trust in the observer in retaining information? Can creativity happen in the observer? What type of creativity is coming up if you're feeling limited and trying to, trying to create creati creativity from experiencing yourself as being limited in the moment or pre or even even try like okay today I'm going to be really identified with my thinking I'm going to let myself be really lim limited in my head in my body and I'm going to try and remember this book uh, and then tomorrow try it for half an hour in the observer uh, but with, with the in these spiritual states there is a, a, a thing of practice and trust it's not going to be like you're in the observer on the first day and things are going to go great. It, take, it takes practice, you know. It's, it's almost like switching over. For me, when I go, if I was going from creativity in the ego to creativity in the observer, there'd be a lot of switch over, a lot of uh, lack of trust, a lot of negative thoughts. But eventually, you know, you, you know I can share from experience. Um, one can speak in the observer. 
one can one can write in the Observer. One can watch a film in the Observer, and it might, unless you've done that, you know, one could read a book in the Observer. It's just a case of reading a book in the Observer. I think like a children's book would be great to read in the Observer. You know, not let, have the mental dialogue uh, being being attached. Like I'm looking forward to the next page. Oh, I think this character was awful. You know, um, whatever it is.